Well, <laughs> well, my name is Tashi Manox. Tashi Manox. Tashi, of course, is a Tibetan name. And I acquired the Tibetan name when I became a monk. It's one of, part of my monk's name. Of course, I'm not a monk anymore. Uh, I stopped being a monk in around about year 2000, I think. Now, I met Tibetan lamas with my family on holidays. We never had conventional holidays. You know, being a bit of an alternative artistic family, we would go spend time in the Tibetan or the Buddhist communes, say in the south of France, in the Dordogne. And there I met the f my first Tibetan lamas, old, wizened lamas, very wise, uh, very friendly very gregarious with us as kids. And I would look up to these, I was about 11 years old, and I'd look up to these old lamas and um, was very much inspired. They were obviously genuinely happy people, um, down to earth um, and wise. And that was something to aspire to, something to grow up to be. I wanted to be a happy person as well. Of course, we all want to be, to be happy. And I saw that was a, a, a means, a way to be, to be happy. Um, I just had a, um, yeah, a natural, natural attraction to the robes. And um, in fact, whenever they were around and one would leave their top robe, I used to pull it over and put it around myself, you know. I felt a bit of a con because, of course, I didn't have the precepts of a, of a monk, but it, it cocooned me, it made me feel secure and in the place within myself that I wanted to be and wanted to be in the, in the future. Now, I didn't finish my education, my art education, until I actually became a, a monk at the age of, I think I just, yeah, just turned just turned 22 years old, I became a monk. And that was because I was told to become a monk. Um, I hadn't asked for it. I had this kind of silly notion that you had to be a special sort of person to be a spiritual monk. You had to be a spiritual sort of person. Um, and not just anyone could be a monk. And I think one of the, my fears was this re rejection of being told that I wasn't good enough to be a monk. So I kept, it is a secret myself. It was my inward wish. Um, and then years later, as I was finishing my studies, His Holiness the Dalai Lama was visiting the UK and um, I went to greet the His Holiness the Dalai Lama. I even sewed myself sort of a Tibetan star tuba because I thought that was suitable and respectful so I greeted the, the Dalai Lama, um, who gave me his blessing. And the, my family Lama, you could say, who at the time was Akon Rinpoche, Akon Tuku Rinpoche, who established Samueling up in Scotland. Um, and he knew us as a family. He used to say we were perhaps one of the first complete Western Buddhist families that he knew. And at that time he, he um, mentioned to the, my local lamas in, in my local town, uh, two lamas from Pelpung in Tibet. He said that he'd foreseen that I would become a monk in the very near future. And this news came to me from these lamas. And so I was quite shocked to hear this. Um, pleasantly surprised. I think I burst into tears, you know, because it was like a sort of a recognition of, of my inner wishes um, and so then um, I took the precepts with Kala Rinpoche, um, my first uh, Getzel uh, precepts. And um, yeah, the, it went on from there. And now I've been um, a lay practitioner in, in my adult life as l long or, no, if not longer now, it's a year longer as uh, a lay person, as I was a monk. So I've gone past the halfway. I used to be able to say, as a monk for half my, my adult life, now it's a little less than half my adult life. 
Um, but it was a, a, a huge uh, influence on me and uh, r really good, good for me, you know. Um, my mother always used to say, you know, how, when she visits here where I live, and she says, how are you so tidy? You know, I'm, I'm so messy, she said. And I said, well, I was, I was a monk. It's a bit like being in the army, you know, you have few possessions and you should be mindful of, of where you put things and, and, you know, keep things tidy. So it, it benefited me in many, many ways, being a monk. Um, but more, more really to imbue the, the Dharma, you know, to, to have the opportunity to really practice Dharma properly. Um, because that's the whole thing of a monk, is that you can, you give your time to study and to practice Dharma with less distractions, you know, it, because you're not engaged in relationships and such, you know, which, which we are pretty much focused on as a, a lay person. It's what occupies most of our, our time and, and effort and problems and all the rest of it. So as, as a monk, you're, you're free of that. Uh, it's not always easy, of course, to be celibate. You know, you can struggle with that in itself. But generally speaking, for myself, it gave me the time and opportunity to practice uh, and study Dharma, or I should say study and practice Dharma.